welcome to our new video that is on basic microbiology and in this video we are going to start the start with the basic introduction on microbiology and in next lecture we will discuss the structure and function of microorganisms and then we will discuss the detailed explanation on every microbial organelles or microbial organelles like micro mitochondria protoplast or anything okay so in this video we are going to start the uh, topic index or classifications on living microorganisms and uh, where we will discuss the how the microorganisms are classified in different groups okay and in next topic that is field in field in microbiology that means how many fields are there which in which field we are going to uh, know about the microbiology so all these things we will discuss about the fields in microbiology how many fields are there in microbiology all we will discuss in detail and in next that is the discovery of microorganisms and microscopes so who discovered microorganisms and microscope and how they discovered it so all we will discuss in the discovery topic okay and next that is importance of microbiology so what are the importance of microbiology why we should know about microbiology why we should study about the microbiology all we will discuss in this lecture one okay so let's move on to the first slide that is classification of living microorganisms okay so before discussing about the classification of living microorganisms at first we have to know how the all living microorganisms which are present in our world they are classified then we will go to the living microorganisms so at first we will go to the all living organisms so all living organisms are classified into five kingdoms so the scientist whitaker first differentiate all the living microorganisms into five different kingdoms so what are the kingdoms so first is the monera kingdom then protista then fungi then planty and then animalia so depending on the characteristics he differentiate the living organisms or classify the uh, living organisms into five kingdoms so first is the so at first how he differentiate the organisms so at first any organism he take then he classified those organisms based on their characteristics and based on their uh, characteristics if an uh, organism have the characteristics of prokaryotes then he put them in prokaryotic section and all the prokaryotic organisms are placed in the monera kingdom and uh, uh, if the uh, organisms have the characteristics of eukaryotes then he put the, all the microorganisms all the uh, living things on the eukaryotic section so first section is the prokaryotic section and all the prokaryotes are placed in the monera group okay this is the one kingdom and all the living organisms which are present in the eukaryotic section they are now further differentiated into two groups one is the unicellular and another is the multicellular so unicellular eukaryotic organisms are classified here and present uh, and they placed in the protista kingdom okay okay and in next the multicellular eukaryotic organisms who are multicellular they are then further classified with the characteristics with with cell wall and without cell wall so eukaryotic organisms with multicellular if they do not have any cell wall then this type of organisms are placed in the animalia group okay and then the eukaryotic organism with multicellular if they have cell wall then they are classified on the basis of photosynthesis so if they do not perform photosynthesis then they are placed in the fungi group and if they perform photosynthesis then they are placed in the planty group so in this way the all the living microorganisms or sorry all the living organisms are placed in the five kingdom that is monera where prokaryotes are placed and next the protista where unicellulars are placed and next uh, that is the animalia where eukaryotic multicellular and without cell wall organisms are placed and then the fungi where eukaryotic multicellular with cell wall 
and do not perform photosynthesis this type of characteristics contained in fungi okay and the planty group contain the eukaryotes then multicellular then with cell wall and perform photosynthesis okay so in this way Whitaker differentiate all the living organisms into five kingdom and now we will discuss the classification of living microorganisms okay so all the microorganisms are classified into two groups that are acellular and cellular so acellular means there is no cell so they are not they don't have any cell and have no cell membrane so they don't have any cell membrane or cell they are composed of few genes protected by protein coat okay so they have only a dna material and a protein cover so example like viruses all we know that and they can live and reproduce only when inside a living cell so inside a living cell only they can reproduce and live okay so this is the acellular group the microorganisms and the cellular type microorganisms are further classified into prokaryotes and eukaryotes so prokaryotic microorganisms have no nucleus they don't have any nucleus and have no membrane bound organelles so they don't have any membrane bound organelles like mitochondria golgi bodies or er complex okay but eukaryote eukaryotic micro oh sorry prokaryotic uh, microorganisms examples are bacteria and archaea and eukaryotic microorganisms have true nucleus they have a membrane bound nucleus and many membrane bound organelles like mitochondria protoplast er complex golgi bodies okay and eukaryotic microorganisms are examples are algae protozoa fungi okay so this is the classification of microorganisms okay acellular cellular and in cellular they are classified into prokaryotes and eukaryotic microorganisms okay so move on to the next topic that is field in microbiology what are the fields are present in microbiology so here we will see microbiology are classified into basic two parts that is the basic research microbiology and basic applied microbiology so in basic research microbiology first point is the microbial taxonomy where all the naming is there uh, all the classification of microorganisms and their names are given in this section and based on the study of the microorganisms different type of microorganisms are uh, uh, studied in different uh, section like in bacteriology the bacteria class uh, studied and in phycology algae are studied and in mycology fungi are studied and in protozoology where the protozoa uh, protozoa <coughs> microorganisms are studied and in parasitology parasites are studied and virology viruses are studied here and next point here, by process so here the microbial metabolisms are studied microbial metabolisms like how the glucose how the microorganisms break down the glucose that is a complex uh, compound and produce a uh, produce atp or any type of energy from that okay so in this whole process we will discuss in the microbial metabolism so in microbial genetics we will discuss about the in microbial genetics we will discuss the genetic material which are present or gen, uh, gene sequences or how many genes which type of genes uh, are or which type of proteins are uh, formed from there so all these things we will discuss or all these things we will study in this microbial genetical section okay and in microbial ecology we will discuss about the we will discuss about the relationship with microorganisms with their involvement that means which in which type of uh, which type of involvement what type of microorganisms will grow efficiently that will be studied in microbial ecology okay so next point is in relation to disease so the <clears throat> microorganisms uh, all we know that microorganisms are related to the disease so uh, how the microorganisms invade our immune system and cause the disease in human that will be studied in immunology and in epidemiology the study uh, the <coughs> how uh, disease formed that uh, means uh, study of disease is uh, in epidemiology and etiology means cause of disease how the 
diseases caused okay so this is a relation with disease of microbiology and in the applied microbiology form first we will discuss the disease related that is infection control and chemotherapy so to control the infection like from hospital infection or by uh, nozzle infection what type of infection we can uh, get from this uh, infectious uh, <coughs> microorganisms and how we can control them so this type of things we will uh, <coughs> study in applied microbiology and chemotherapy means chemical compounds which we have to use or which we develop to uh, <coughs> develop to nullify or develop to uh, eliminate the particular disease so this is the chemotherapy which we can study it in applied microbiology and then environmental microbiology like food microbiology or water microbiology or soil microbiology how they are uh, how they are important to our uh, environment so in these things we will discuss in the how we can use microorganisms for our betterment to environment so in these things we will discuss in uh, we will study in applied microbiology and next is industrial so industrial this is the most important for applied microbiology that is food and beverages technology like many microorganisms are used to produce different fermented foods different uh, alcoholic beverages so we can use them and uh, to study what type of pathogenic disease causing microorganisms we have to eliminate from the foods so this type of uh, study is related in industrial microbiology and next is the pharmaceutical microbiology like pharmaceutical products are used or produced by the microorganisms and to kill the microorganism and genetic engineering that means uh, to modify the genes for to eliminate the disease that is the <coughs> that is the subject we can study under the applied microbiology okay so here we will also can see or you can see these notes as your reference that is microbial taxonomy that is the classification of microorganism and all these things we have discussed here that is bacteriology means study of bacteria phycology means study of algae and mycology means study of fungi protozoology means uh, study of protozoa and parasitology means study of parasite virology means study of viruses and microbial metabolism what we have discussed here that is chemical reaction that occur in microbes and microbial genetics that is uh, genetical confirmation we have to study it here and microbial ecology that is the relationship of microbes with each other and with the environment okay and immunology epidemiology etiology infection uh, infection control and chemotherapy all are under the health related field and field according to application of knowledge where we can use the application of microbiology that is the food and beverage technology environmental microbiology industrial microbiology or pharmaceutical microbiology or genetic engineering okay so these are the area or field of microbiology where we can study so next point is the distribution of microorganism in on earth so microorganisms in which environment most of the microorganisms are present and in what percentage they are present in different uh, environments so that will be that we will uh, discuss here that is in marine subsurface 66 percent microorganisms are present in terrestrial subsurface that is that is the in land surface where the twin, uh, 26 percent of microorganisms are pair in water surface that is most of the microorganisms are present that is a 66 percent in water surface and in terrestrial or land surface 26 percent of microorganisms are pair and in soil surface or surface soil that is 4.8 percent microorganisms are present and in oceans 2.2 percent microorganisms are present or growing there okay so now move on to the next point the next topic that is the discovery of microorganisms and microscope who discovered the microorganisms and microscope so before this uh, discussing about the micros uh, <coughs> microscope and microorganisms at first we have to know about who discovered the cell how discover he discovered the cell so first thing about the robert hook who discovered or proposed the cell theory 
so he observed the cork cell with crude microscope and he said that all living things are composed of cells all living things have one thing that is a cell that is a unit of life so he termed the uh, he termed the <coughs> cell and in his micrographia book he wrote a, a book that is a micrographia which he published and in this book that is that contained drawings of cork cell which was discovered using a early microscope okay so here we can see this is the microscope which he used that is a compound microscope he used to study the cell and he proposed the cell theory where he uh, found uh, where he uh, draw the picture of the mold picture of the bluish mold structure okay so he is the first scientist who discovered the cell okay and so the cork cell the cork cell uh, robert hooke saw were actually the remains of dead plant cells so whatever he seen he have seen he had seen in the in his microscope that are the dead plant cell that is the cork cell okay but in next Leeuwenhoek who was the was actually the first man to observe live cell so he came with his uh, <coughs> own made microscope he made a microscope that is a simple microscope and he first observed sperm cell bacteria and RBCs and he termed the bacteria in his um, in his uh, <coughs> published book that is he termed the bacteria as animalcules okay and by his observations we first know about the bacteriology and microbiology so that's why he is known as the or Leeuwenhoek is known as the father of microbiology because after his study or after his research at first we have to we have to know about the bacteriology and microbiology okay so this is the this is the microscope this is the microscope this is the microscope invented by Leeuwenhoek and here the lenses lens is present and in the top position here here in the top position a sample is present specimen is put here put it here and this is a screw by <coughs> rotating this screw or we can add uh, he can adjust the specimen to towards its lens okay so in this way he discovered or showed the micro first uh, discovered the microorganisms okay so here also so at first <coughs> cell theory or cell are discovered that is dead cell is discovered by or seen by robert hook and then then a microscope is microscope is uh, <coughs> discovered by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek and this is the microscope that is a simple microscope here the lens is present here the specimen is placed and this is the screw by adjusting this screw he can see the microorganisms okay so this is the most old type of micro uh, microscope and here uh, <coughs> Leeuwenhoek termed the bacterial cell as animalcules were uh, included uh, which he included uh, in a letter which he sent to the royal society in 1683 okay so now move on to the next point that is the importance of microbiology so what are the importance of microbiology why we should know the microbiology all times we uh, know that microorganisms are harmful but we don't know that microorganisms are also very beneficial for our or very important for our living okay so now discuss about the importance of microbiology so at first the discover uh, at first the contribution of microorganisms in modern agriculture how they contribute to the modern agriculture so this is a swabin plant in the swabin plant in their root in their root some microorganisms are grow and produce a root nodule like this which will be seen here sorry here in here that is the root nodules and in this root nodules in this root nodules 
the microorganisms are present and these microorganisms absorb the <coughs> molecular nitrogen absorb the nitrogen from air and they uh, fix it into the plant cell and that nitrogenous compound is that nitrogenous compound is used by this plant cell for their growth so here this root nodules the microorganisms which are present in root nodules they help the plant to grow and to get the nitrogenous compound okay so in this way microorganisms help the plant cells to grow okay and in next the ruminant animals ruminant animals means cows like cows these animals these animals eat grass and this grass are composed of cellulose so this cellulose that is a complex carbohydrate which is breakdown which is breakdown by the microorganisms to glucose and further this glucose is further fermented or uh, by fermentation they produce fatty acid and some waste products so fatty acid that is the nu uh, uh, nutritional <coughs> compound for this animal so this animal use this fatty acid for their nutrition and this waste product are removed from the body okay so in this way microorganisms are very important for digestion of the grass what they have ate for their living okay so in next we will discuss about the importance of microorganisms in human body so in human body in their uh, intestine that is the gastrointestinal tract in the gastrointestinal tract many types of microorganisms are there for our digestion so when we eat any vegetable this time the vegetables are degraded to the uh, from their complex carbohydrate to simple carbohydrate and then we take the nutrition from that so in this way also microorganisms help in digestion of our of human body or human food okay so now let's discuss about the next contribution of microorganism or importance of microorganism that is microorganisms convert the glucose into lactic acid or into ethanol so further this lactic acid producing bacteria like uh, lactobacillus from this lactic acid we can produce the milk like product okay and from ethanol we can produce the ethanolic beverages okay and from this lactic acid bacteria the, then we can produce the uh, propionic acid and through acetic acid which are required for to produce the baked product okay bakery product and from acetic acid we can produce the pickles so in many ways microorganisms are used for the fermented foods okay so these are the importance that is the most important importance for microorganisms next next importance that is the last importance that is the ethanol as a biofuel so here we can see these are the cornstarch and the cellulose all these carbohydrate complex carbo carbohydrate products are simplified or break down to glucose by the microorganisms and then further fermentation is done by these microorganisms and they produce ethanol this ethanol this ethanol is produced in the industry in the industry and in industry the ethanol which is produced used as a biofuel for many use okay so in this way microorganisms are very beneficial for our industrial purpose or agricultural purpose or our human body okay so these are the all importance and these are the all about this lecture and in this uh, in our next video or ne next lecture on microbiology or basic microbiology we will discuss about the cell structure ba bacterial structure like cell wall structures plasma membrane structure then flagellous flagella structure and the cell organelles which have in bacteria and also which are present in the higher eukaryotic microorganisms that like uh, mitochondria golgi bodies all we will discuss in our next video okay so thank you for watching this video.